All right, you guys. So right. welcome to this week's Team Elite Weekly Call. My name is David Lamoureux. I'm very excited to have you uh, joining, in, joining in with us here on this Monday call. And, uh, you know, another good chance to see you all again. I'm really excited about where we're at and the team momentum going on, you guys. We are unstoppable, okay? And I wanted to encourage you, this is your time. This is your year, okay? So you're doing the right things by plugging in to the weekly uh, to the weekly team call. So if you're on this call, congratulations. You are, you are a runner and you're a builder. And I'm excited about what your, what your, what, what, uh, what your future has in, in store for you. So first off, I'm going to pass this off to Matthew Wesley, who's going to kick this thing off for us. So Matthew, go ahead, buddy. You're All on. right. Excellent. Excellent. Can you hear me? Okay. Excellent. All right. Awesome. Hey, everybody, I want to welcome you all to this call. You know, everybody that's on here, you're a, you're a leader. You're a leader. You're plugging in. You're doing what it takes to get ahead in this business and in life, you know, so just I applaud you. Props to you. A uh, little disclaimer. Um, I, today is my little one's 10th birthday, and for her birthday, she wanted to come out to Fossil Rim over here in uh, Glen Rose, Texas, which is a drive through safari. So I got two happy kids in the back, and we are surrounded by animals. So any background noise, I just want to go ahead and let you guys know what that's going to be. There's probably going to be some screaming and squealing. So I'm going to see if I can get through this stuff. Um, you know, we had uh, LVA uh, just a couple days ago. And uh, for us here in, in, uh, in Texas, we were down in Austin, and we had Dan Mollering, uh, an absolute rock star in the business, an incredible human being, come in and talk to us and, and teach us. That guy just, he ripped it. He went for like four hours nonstop. He did not take a breath. He did not go to the bathroom. It was just solid, hardcore information, powerful, impactful stuff. And it was, it was notes all morning. I mean, we were, we were just power taking notes. One of the things that he touched on and he really pressed on, and I know we've talked about it, but there's a reason why these elites are, are talking about it and pressing it. And there's a reason why we talk about it. And that is attending events. Now, when a lot of these leaders got in, they were told events are non-negotiable. I mean, you just, you make it, period. End of subject, you just make it. And there's a reason why. Sometimes we can't see it up front. Sometimes we don't really fully understand and we've just got to go on that blind faith and just know that we're being told by the people that are in the position that we want to get to. We are being told by the people who have the income that we are striving for that we're supposed to make the events. So, so we trust them and we just go. It's very, very obvious. One of the reasons why we go is to help build our belief. What does that mean exactly? When you go to these big events, LVA, Elite Academy, Global, you're, you're growing your belief because you're around like-minded people. You're also getting um, more information every time you go about the product, about the business, about the industry, about um, the individuals that are leading us and guiding us, about corporate, about what's happening. You're getting all this information. Dan actually gave us an inside scoop to some changes coming up in the physique line. Now, some people, you know, in other industries, other companies, you know, they hear, oh my gosh, they're changing something. You know, they get nervous every time I hear about a change, whether it's been to the comp plan, to some sort of a structure or to a product line. I get super excited. And again, that inside scoop that Dan gave us was super powerful. I am really excited about what we got coming down the pipe. They're actually going to be doing a huge release on uh, February 1st. There's going to be a big Zoom and uh, they usually do, uh, it's a whole big huge to do. So we're going to be able to post that information for everybody. and You're going to be able to get all caught up to speed on what we have coming and, and what it's going to be. So building your belief, it comes from many different directions. That's why attending the events is huge, but also learning, learning other people's stories, learning, le getting to know the people that, that are coming in to speak. They're very, very personable. You have got, you know, minutes and minutes to, to get upfront and personal with them before, during, and after the event. These, these are people that are normally untouchable in other companies and they're coming in and they're making themselves accessible. They're coming in to teach us, but they're also coming in to, to um, rub shoulders, rub elbows, get to know you. You know, we're exchanging phone numbers, we're building friendships, and we're getting to know their story as well as the stories of people around us. Those stories are very, very powerful because when you're talking to people, you got, we got all the facts in the world. And, and facts are awesome. But a lot of people, <laughs> excuse me, a lot of people want to know, what is, what is it doing for how did they get there and it's the story 
Academy's coming up, guys. It's not too late. If you don't have your ticket, make your arrangements and just get it there, man. We could talk about people that finally just realized, okay, I'm told to be there. I need to be there. They go to EA. It's life changing. And that's what rocketed their business. So attending the events is, is huge and important, man. And I don't know if anybody's jumped on the hair care bandwagon yet, but what we have going on with hair care, Dan Mullering was, was a perfect example. He said two or three times, you know, we're not supposed to say that it's regrowing your hair, but he said, guys, man, it is regrowing my hair. So he was a guy who's going bald and um, balding, not bad, just a little bit on the top. And it is literally, he showed us, you know, it is night and day difference what it's already starting to do for him. So the hair care, they've also got them in samples. You can, uh, I think it's like uh, 10 bucks for five samples and it's the, it's all three components to the, to the hair care line. You can get those samples guys. It's a great way to, to pass them out and turn people onto this incredible product that we have and what it's doing to everybody's hair. So there's a little bit of uh, uh, catching up, a little housekeeping and everything for everybody. Hope, uh, hope it wasn't too crazy. I asked the kids to be quiet. I think they, they kind of did it. They're being pretty awesome back there. So I'm going to take a moment and introduce our teacher speaker today, Caleb Wesley. We all know him. Caleb has been just bringing it, man. Incredible information every time. Whenever I get a chance to... Very, very truthful in what he is saying, not asking us or telling us or instructing us to do anything that he hasn't done or anything that he is not doing. And it's always not just something he heard about or something that maybe have you know caught his attention, but it's things that he has done and it's proving to have success follow it. So Caleb, I want to turn this over to you and I want to thank you for your time, man. I know you've, you've been uh, fighting the no voice thing and uh, also just being super busy. So thank you. Thank you for your time, Caleb. Well, I appreciate it, Matthew. Can you guys hear me okay? You are loud and clear. Let it rip. Wonderful. Well, hey guys, first of all, again, I want to thank you for getting on the call, man. I know Mondays can be a little bit crazy and I'm glad that you, uh, are willing to take the time to better yourself. And I think it's kind of funny, but also kind of ironic that I want to talk to you about storytelling today. And I'm talking to you when I barely have a voice, the first irony, and also on a day like today, Martin Luther King Day. And kind of like what David alluded to in the beginning, the power of the movement that was Martin Luther King Jr., what he was capable of doing. And we'll touch on that in a minute, but I want to kind of open things up today and ask you first of all, if you follow through on your assignment from last week, if you don't remember, I had come to you and we spoke on a topic of vision and what a vision means to your life, what that looks like, how to solve the mystery of if you have a goal or if you have a vision, but also beginning to put the pieces in place of what that vision looks like in your life for the different facets. So I want to ask you guys, first of all, if you have crafted your vision or have you begun that journey of casting your vision for yourself first and foremost? Because like we talked about, nobody wants to follow somebody who doesn't know where they're going. You're all hanging out with your friends. You're trying to figure out somewhere to go eat, right? And what's the first thing everybody says? No, I don't really care. Where do you want to go eat? Oh, I don't really care. And typically, where you end up going is the first place one of the friends just says, hey, I want to go here. And it's so strange that in such a simple dynamic as a group conversation of friends, that one person being willing to stand up have a plan and say, this is what we're doing. Everybody flocks to that person and wants to follow something as simple as where are you going to go eat? But that dynamic is not unique to that one situation that happens in all of life. People are tired of not knowing what they want for their life. Do you have any idea how many people wake up in the morning hating their job? Did you know that the risk of heart attack, death by heart attack, increases between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. on a Monday morning? Why? Are people just so excited to go to work on Monday morning that they're having heart attacks? No. 
It's because people hate what they're doing, but they don't know an alternative. They don't have somebody saying there's something different. There's another option. For the Martin Luther King Jr. Day, we're celebrating a movement, but the thing about the movement was that they didn't have Twitter. They didn't have Instagram. They didn't even have Zoom. They had no capacity to cast a vision to thousands of people at one time. No, no, no. It had to be word of mouth. And every single person who showed up on that day, I believe it was over 250,000, 25% of the audience was white. So you can't even say, well, it was a racial deal. They didn't come for Martin Luther King Jr. They weren't there to hear a speech. They knew that there was something wrong in our society. They knew that there was an issue that needed to be rectified and they were there for themselves. And he just happened to begin casting a vision of what he believed could be different. But every one of those people didn't buy into him. They weren't here to listen to him. I mean, think about the audio equipment back then, listening to that speech, probably nobody could understand it. It was probably all staticky, it was hot. But the difference is that they were there for themselves because they saw an individual casting a vision by word of mouth. One person would talk to the next person and they were moved because there was someone with a vision. They didn't go for him, they went for themselves. So having your vision, we're not trying to sell somebody on it. I'm not trying to convince anybody to do what we do or to do what I'm doing. But here's the important thing, is that you become a storyteller. You become a vision caster. Because what stories do is they allow the mind to escape the prisons of today. They allow you to break the shackles of the difficulties that you're facing, of your bank account balance, of the debt that you have of the collectors that are calling you, of the family member that you just lost. Why do you think people love watching movies? It's a way to receive a story, to delve into a story. And if you can engage people like that, if you can paint the picture of what a better tomorrow can look like, that's powerful, guys. That is absolutely powerful. But being able to cast that vision means that you have to tell a story. And my question to you is, do you have a story that's worth telling? Do you have a vision, a painting that you can, you can speak to somebody and begin to help them live out that better future? Do you have a compelling picture of what tomorrow could and should look like? And then do you believe that that better future not only should happen, but must happen? That that future must be realized? Do you have that? And if you do, then my next question is, are you telling people? Are you sharing that beautiful vision that you have, that future? Are you casting that vision? You say, okay, Caleb, what do you mean by that? What does that look like? Well, everybody grew up a little bit different. I had a family and a dad who always told me stories. And they were stories about growing up, about life, about things that were went through. But what they were always pictured as is engaging. And they wrap your mind. Jim Rohn has a quote that says, don't be lazy in the language. Utilize this incredible tool that you have called English. It's one of the broadest, most detailed languages in the world for you to speak. It gives depth and detail. Are you speaking to somebody in a manner that they're flung into the vision that you have for them? Are you saying, hey, you can get a Jeep? Or are you saying, what would it be like to have your wife sitting in the passenger of your Jeep as you drove through the Grand Canyon? 
Do you see how that begins to paint a picture for you of what that looks like? You can almost hear the Colorado River rolling through the cliffs. You can feel the wind from the Jeep as you roll down the highway. You can see the red sand go across the road. Does it compel? Does it give you a vision? When you speak, are you utilizing ways in which to speak better? Do you speak everything really monotone to where all of your words kind of sound the same and it gets really boring really quick? You probably just almost turned off my video right there. Because no one wants to listen to a droning monologue. Are you learning how to use highs in your voice and lows in your voice? Are you learning how to speak quickly to, to feel excited? And then are you slowing down? and maybe talking quieter so that they really listen? Are you using the tools that you have in this language to properly communicate? Did you even know that was a thing? And I know that's a lot of questions and what I wanna empower you with is the fact that you have one of the most powerful tools in the human race. And I would venture to actually say, the most powerful tool, the ability to speak. Because every movement, army, civilization, great accomplishment, anything that has ever been accomplished in the human race began as a thought and was spoken. Every one of them, every one. There was an individual who could stand up and compel a people, a nation, or a friend to move toward a future that they saw as being beneficial, that they saw as the reason why it should be done, that it had to and it must be accomplished. Are you telling stories? Or are you telling facts? Because I don't know about you, but when I want to go to bed, I don't watch bedtime facts, right? I turn on the TV because I want bedtime stories. I don't know if you read, I'm a huge component of reading and the reason that I am, I got plenty of time. The reason that I'm a component of reading is because it allows you to escape. If you only read nonfiction, I would challenge you to pick up a good fiction book, an engaging book that thrusts you into a world, whether that's in the future, in the past, a fantasy, but begin to listen to the people who have mastered the art of storytelling. Because if you can tell a story like a writer can, if you can pull somebody in to your story and cast them the vision of your future, that moves people. And let me tell you this folks, we are in the business of moving people. We move people to a decision. We move people to a better future. We move people from event to event. We move people to get product, but how do you move people? You have two options. You can threaten them or you can inspire them. Those are the only two ways. We talk about bosses that we hate to work for. We've all had a, have a job here. I'm sure you've had a crappy boss before. What did the boss tell you to do? What to do? Because you had to do it or you're gonna get fired, right? But what does a leader do? He tells you what you should do because it'll get you closer to your desired result. That's a big difference, guys. So you can inspire or you can threaten. Well, if nobody works for you, we can't really threaten them. And we have a volunteer army here. I can't threaten you to do anything. That doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't work, right? You just turn off your phone and not listen to Caleb anymore. But what I can do is inspire you. What I can do is speak into your life and convince you of a better future. Not of what I'm doing, not what you should do, but of a better future. Of what could be and what should be, yea, what must be. Are you casting a vision? Are you telling a story? But once again, do you have a story worth telling? Do you know the future that's worth engaging people? I know I do. I know I tell you guys every day because I believe 
in what we are trying to achieve here. I believe that my purpose is to help everyone live a more fulfilled life, whether that's financially, spiritually, relationally, that is my purpose, is to help you live a more fulfilled life. But what is yours? Do you, do you feel like you have a purpose? Have you discovered it yet? And if you haven't, I would challenge you that you're not thinking of it. Are you searching your soul? Are you creating that vision for the future like we talked about? And I'm going to keep going back to that because I'll let Caleb shut up away. But it's important because if you don't have a vision to cast, you cannot move people. And I don't care if that's moving your spouse to marry you. I don't care if that's moving your kids to go to college or if that's moving your team to spread the term of life advantage. If you don't have a vision and you can't tell the story, nothing will happen. It won't. So tell a good story. Be engaging. If you feel like you don't know how to speak, then join a Toastmasters group. Toastmasters is an incredible organization that their entire purpose is to help people speak better. Do you use um when you're trying to think of something to say? Or do you know the power of just being silent? Have you gone on YouTube to look at the TED Talks of how to speak more powerfully, how to be heard when you speak. Are you using the tools at your disposal to become better? These are so important, guys. Become a good storyteller, and your life will be much easier. You will see people wanting to follow you because no longer are they wanting to do it for you, or because of you know they're doing it for themselves. Just like those 200,000 plus people marched on Washington to follow Mr. King, not because of what he said, not because of his plan, but for themselves, because they saw a better future that they believed in and they were willing to do what it took to create that vision because not only did they believe that it should be, but that it must be. So cast a good vision, my friends. Tell a good story and watch everyone follow the vision that you've casted. I love you guys. Back to you, Matthew. Wow, man. That was really, really incredible. Man, I mean, that was, that was again, just the, the depth of it. I'm sitting here thinking, wow, man, that's it, it's just a, a, illuminating. You know, definitely bringing things, bringing things into view. So, uh, man, just uh, so uh, everybody, we've got, you know, we've got these incredible trainings happening. You know, here for us, we do our team trainings every, every, <laughs> sorry, guys, I have a draft in the car. We do these incredible trainings once a week for us for our team. There's other, there's other options. Or there's um, different uh, corporate team Zooms we can be getting on. And, um, uh, you know, to, to be part of this, to seize this opportunity and, and be in, in, enrolled in, in the engagement of these videos is one thing. We take our notes. We, we make our, our thoughts of it. But then it's, it's putting it to action. You know, like Hill just talked about, there, there's avenues that, that we can take to help us become uh, better speakers. He mentioned uh, Toastmasters and, and things like that. Uh, I know I probably need to sign up for about everything out there. So I'm going to go ahead and fill my schedule with uh, <laughs> Toastmasters. Anybody else that will kind of help me along. Um, putting it to action, though. Put it, putting these, these teachings, these lessons to action. Uh, can you guys see that? Can you guys see that? <laughs> putting putting to action, you know what what we're learning is is uh, is more important than just learning it. So uh, you know, again, Caleb, thank you so much. You know, we're coming up. We still got ten days left in this month, and uh, you know, reach out, reach up. Let let's keep moving. Let's let's put this teaching to action. Let's make some plans on on how we're going to be able to learn how to tell our story better, how we're going to be able to learn how to speak better, uh, whether it be, you know, one-on-one -on -one in a small group or a large group. So again, you know, just putting it to action is, is vitally important. And I think it's something that we all just kind of help each other out, keep it in the forefront of our minds. 
you know, we're, we're gonna we're all gonna be able to grow bigger, grow better, grow faster, grow together. So I'm gonna turn this over, David. You got anything you want to add? Close it out a little bit there. Um, I don't want to add anything else, man. What an incredible training from you guys. And uh, I do want to submit one action step for you all. Easy thing for today. Go to YouTube and type in TED Talks, how to tell a story or how to speak like a leader. Just go to YouTube, TED Talk, how to speak, and then let it pick something for you. And then just pick one of those that you want to learn how to do better. Okay, you guys, I love each and every one of you. Thank you all so much. Uh, for joining in on this weekly call. And uh, if you are watching by the recording, we love you guys too. You guys have a great rest of your day. And uh, just remember, remember next week, here's the schedule for next week. Next Monday night, we have a Team Elite Zoom opportunity meeting at 8 p.m. And then also next Wednesday, we have a group physical meeting at Kelly's house, Miss Kelly Brown's house. That's gonna be, um, it's gonna be from 6.30 to 8 or from, actually, I think it's from 7 to 8.30. I'll have to check with her. But I'll put the details up in the group, in the chat, and everything, you guys, with, with the address and all that. So that's next week, next Wednesday. It's in the Fort Worth area. Invite people to that group physical meeting. It's really important. So love you guys. Y'all have a great rest of your Monday. If you need any help at all, don't hesitate to give any one of us a call. All right? Love you guys.